Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you how to make fine art black and white shooting from 10,000 feet from an airplane. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Remedy. I'm a French photographer living normally in Paris, but right now I'm in Los Angeles and I will be traveling in many places in the US. I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode and all the past episodes and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Last week I showed you how to make some lifestyle photography in a beach in Florida where you're trying to take a subject with the sun coming down right behind them. That's the final result. It's a pretty cool trick. This week I was flying back from Florida and I was going over nice mountains and I had this idea of making fine art photography from the airplane. I'm going to show you how I shot it. I'm going to show you how I retouch it right now. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Just before we get started with the tutorial, really quick, I just want to inform you that I see I have a challenge going on. If you go to tutorials uh, on my website, you will see here there is a competition on sunset landscape in the wild. So it normally is for sunsets and it's for in the wild, not in the city. And you will see there is a lot, there's over already 300 entries and the one that gets the most like, so the best what you can do is load a photo and then share it with your Facebook fans. And the one that gets the most like will win a course from me and will also be uh, some publicity so I can talk about his work on, on, uh, on my next show, which will get you to you know tens of thousands of people around the world that, that will see your, your work. So that's the main thing that you can win. Also, I will use this episode to explain what I like and what I don't like in some of these photos and give you some compositing tricks, at least from my knowledge. For this tutorial, we're gonna be using Tonality Pro from MacFun. And if you wanna purchase it, make sure you go to My Gear and then you have a, a link there where you can get 10% if you use the code photo search, you just click here. What I advise you to do is to get their Creative Kit Plus, which is basically all their plugins, where you get 30% off and you get an additional 10% uh, if you use the code photo search. So you will need that to be able to follow along this tutorial. Today's tutorial is about uh, Tonality Pro and also about making fine art from an airplane. Uh, when, I, when I'm in the airplane, I always take my camera with me and that's why I like having the Sony A7R, but it works with any camera because it's small. And usually I like to take some photos uh, with my go-to lens is about 35 millimeter. I find that this is wide enough, not too wide so that you don't get the window, but wide enough to really get the scenery. And I was flying from Houston to Los Angeles and I was passing over these mountains, which I have no idea what they are. Uh, probably close to Vegas, I, I have reasons to believe, but I'm not even sure. And they were really nice, there was like a nice uh, feeling to it, but it was way too bright. So what I usually do is I heavily underexpose this photo when I wanna make like fine art photography. There's a bit of work to be done in Lightroom and then in Tonality Pro to really make it a, a nice photo, but you know, shooting from 10,000 feet will give you uh, photos you which is very hard to get otherwise. So when you take the plane, take the time to look in your window and take maximum photos. And you will see that, uh, now the trick is to take a lot of photos. So you have to make sure that, you know, I had a lot of blurry ones, but you know, uh, when you have, if you focus well on anywhere on the landscape and you have a lot of light, it's cool. Normally the photo should have been taken at like 100 of a second at F11, but I shot it at 1 400. I really wanted to make it very dense because I didn't want to have any highlights and because I want to give it a dramatic feeling. Now the colors were not amazing, plus I was wearing a, a pink shirt, so it was giving like, you can see there's a little bit of pink there, but as I'm gonna go for a black and white fine art, it's not gonna matter. So, uh, let's do this. I'm gonna open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. That's just to get all my tones completely compressed. And then by doing the white point, which I'm gonna go a lot, look at my histogram. Look, I'm moving all the values to the right until I see some points uh, which are something like this. And then I'm gonna move the blacks, holding the Alt key until I see some black, something like that. Okay, I'm not gonna to touch clarity because I'm gonna deal that in uh, Tonality Pro. I'm gonna turn down the saturation to see how it looks like. It's already looking like a nice dramatic black and white. One thing that's very important is I'm gonna, I'm gonna enable the profiles correction, remove chromatic aberration and I'm gonna do my noise reduction. So I'm gonna zoom in and it's a bit noisy because I was shooting through a window, 
but I'm going to reduce the noise of about 30 and then the sharpening around 70. Okay, something like this. And I've always had this formula where I take 70, 100, I'm sorry, and I deduct whatever I put in noise. That's just my way of doing things. Okay, now that uh, there is a little bit of a weird lighting. That's because of the window, but I don't think it's going to matter much on the black and white. I have a couple of spots. I was just shooting at the beach and I did not clean my sensor, so I've got some really bad spot. And I must say that's one thing I hate about the Sony A7R compared to the Canon that I had is that it really takes on spots, like really a lot more and I do not like this at all so that's one big down for the Sony A7R uh, compared to the Nikon camera but you know on this such a structure I don't think much is to be seen uh, yeah I don't think anybody's going to notice that and uh, even so I'm going to do a big print of this photo because I really like the end result okay now I'm ready into uh, to put it to tonality pro or oh, not quite actually I want to do the upright function first upright to make sure the horizon is straight. Okay. Let's right click, edit, Tonality Pro. And I'm gonna use MacFun Tonality Pro, which I love. I'm doing a, a lot of books these days and a lot of fine art prints and I'm using a lot Tonality Pro. It's really my go-to uh, software for making black and white because you will see why. You will see why in this video, especially on this type of thing. Oh, they have a new release, which I have not updated yet, but I'm gonna use the version that I have. And um, Tonality Pro is amazing to bring details. When you're shooting from an airplane through a window, you're losing a lot of details. When you're shooting far away because of the fog, because of the haze, you're losing a lot of details. And Tonality Pro is gonna bring this back to us in a big way. So usually what I usually do is like a little double exposure, a little double development. So I've already developed it in Lightroom. So, you know, I'm just gonna play around with the mid-tones maybe and the exposure, just trying to make it a little bit brighter like this, uh, bring down some shadows and move around the highlights. I'm doing just general settings right now for now, but the main thing I'm gonna be doing, and that's completely crazy about MacFun, is, um, MacFun has uh, clarity and structure. They have clarity and they have structure and they have microstructure. If you are using um, Lightroom, you only have clarity. If you're using Nick software, you only have structure. Okay, now they have clarity, structure, and microstructure and additional settings. And that's why I'm using it because it takes the detail revealing algorithms to a whole new level. So, Basically, there's two things you can do. You can play around with the clarity, add some clarity, which is basically what we're doing in Lightroom, but you can add some structure and that's an amazing structure is, uh, let me see if I can go 100. Let's, you see, if you click on this eyes, as you see before and after, structure is really, I'm gonna click um, back on the, uh, on the fit to screen. Okay, structure is really doing a lot and uh, you can also, microstructure is doing tons of it. But the problem is microstructure is uh, is gonna do it in the sky, it's gonna make spot appear and I don't like that. So usually what I do is I don't touch this, I don't touch this, I don't touch this. I do a general, you know, a general, um, what can I say, uh, you know, settings here for the photo. I haven't done much so far, just added a bit of contrast. And then I'm going to go to layers and I'm gonna add a layer. And on this one, I'm gonna go crazy. Now, instead of using these three settings, I like to use the presets. If you click here, they've got many presets. One that I like a lot is the HDR preset. And what I usually do is I go to HDR Classic, and I click on HDR Classic, and it makes the entire photo being HDR, which kind of looks okay here, but it doesn't look okay in the sky. So now then I'm gonna tweak it. I'm gonna use the HDR Classic, and I'm gonna, lo I'm gonna lower the exposure, something like this. I want a real drama on this one, okay? And so now, but the effect is not good at all on top of the photo. Now here is the trick. Because it's on its own layer, which I did here, I can just take a brush, and as I brush, making sure my softness is at 100%, uh, my size is gonna be a bit lower. As I brush, boom, the effect only goes where I brush. And so I'm brushing only here and only here to bring this sort of amazing effect. I don't want anything in the sky. Now check it out before, after, check this out. I'm gonna go 100%, uh, okay, before, after, before, after. I mean, the difference is amazing. And 
Now it's a bit too much. It looks a bit too HDR to me. So you can just lower, uh, you know, itself. I usually go about 50% on the layer. And there you go, before the HDR, after the HDR. And that's amazing. I use that all the time. Now I'm gonna click one more layer and I'm gonna make the opposite. I'm gonna to go to, uh, boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna to go to glow and I'm gonna add some glow to the photo. Okay, and then same thing, I'm gonna use my brush. And as I brush, I'm only gonna add the, add the glow on the top of the photo. Cause I think it's kind of cool. It makes a, a contrast between the, the, the darks here and the blacks there, okay? And um, now I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's see, before, after, oh, after the layer, I like the idea that it's a bit brighter there. And um, sometime I go one more layer and on this layer, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna close the photo, meaning I'm gonna lower the exposure. But this time, instead of using a brush, I'm gonna use that. Just, I could do this in Lightroom, but you know, for the hell of it, I'm doing it here. So I'm gonna click apply. So what I did is I'm lowering the exposure, but only on this gradient here, okay? I'm gonna apply the gradient and then I'm gonna make another gradient, but I'm gonna turn this one around and I'm only gonna use it on the lower part of the photo, something like this, okay? And then you, I'm gonna apply it. So that this gradients only appear in the bottom. It's just, I'm trying to close the photo, okay? And then usually I do one more later where I do the final touch type of thing. I think I'm gonna go for the uh, smart contrast, smart contrast, or it makes things sort of smarter, a little bit of more contrast. I even might add a little bit of clarity even more and a little bit of structure even more overall on the photo. You know, it's just like one final touch and a little tiny, microstructure is very powerful. You gotta use this with a very light touch. So let's see, before that, after that. If it seems too much, you can just lower the layer. So now I've got the drama that I want but I'm not quite finished with it because if you really want to take it to the next level and you know sell it in a gallery and make it a very dramatic, you need to do some more local corrections. And for this, I like to go back in Lightroom. So I'm gonna apply this. I'm really, really using Tonality Pro for making the, uh, you know, the overall drama of the photo. And um, so as you click apply, all we've done so far is gonna be really uh, put into a TIFF file, which is gonna get automatically re-imported into Lightroom. So let's jump over to Lightroom and wait a second. All right, so I'm back in Lightroom and you see this is where we are. It was a bit foggy and this is where we are now. So we have this, which is still foggy and there's a lot of details there. A Couple of things I wanna deal with uh, in this photo. And so for this, I'm gonna zoom in 100% is uh, I, I know I had a very dusty sensor. So what I usually do is after I've done the drama, because when you go into Tolanti Pro and you make this drama, sometimes it can make spot appear. So I'm gonna go in, in this tool, the spot removal tool, and I'm gonna click on visualize spot. Okay, and I'm gonna move this around until I can see some spots. And you can see here, there is some spots which you wouldn't see otherwise. Otherwise. All right, so now I'm just gonna click and take care of these little spots which you wouldn't see. So we have a clean sky because the last thing you want to do is make a, a big print and uh, and that it's unfortunately not good. Now here, there is something that really bothers me. There is a way in Photoshop to do that. That's because the window makes kind of a weird thing. Uh, another way to do it is using this tool. You can make a big brush like this, really big. And, uh, and just put it over something different, make it even bigger. All right, let's see if it did something. Okay, now it's doing something weird on the sky here. That's because I'm out of, it's too big. I need, I shouldn't be out of the, yeah. Nah, it's not working, it's, I'm way too big. Yeah, this is where sometimes Photoshop comes in very handy. Okay, now it's makes, it makes a round circle. Let's see what clone's gonna do. Clone's gonna be even worse. Okay, so this I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna do it in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how to do that in Photoshop. Or you could, I could just leave it, but it sort of bothers me a little bit. So I wanna do more on this photo to make it more dramatic and I'm gonna do some um, some Ansel Adams dodge and burn. That's what I call it. Uh, and I'd rather do that in Lightroom than in Tonality Pro. I think it's more easier. Tonality Pro I really use for the, the magic of their algorithms of drama. I think it's great. All I want is take a brush and make it a bit, you know, a bit of exposure. And I'm just gonna, you know, on, on the valley, there is a valley here. I wanna add a bit more light in that valley uh, so that we have a, 
a bit more contrast. I want to add some local contrast in this. I can do it also, at, you know, at from a, the sky here, because I want I want the um, the mountains to uh, to appear a bit more. One thing, a little trick: if you move over your mouse over, you can see in red where you painted to make sure that uh, you painted everywhere. Okay, and now the valley is a bit brighter, and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Maybe a bit strong, maybe not. I'm just trying to add some local contrast to this thing. Okay, and maybe what I'm gonna do is uh, use a new brush, but I'm gonna go the reverse. I'm gonna make it darker, and I wanna darken some of that mountains here. That's a bit too much. I'm taking some part of the mountains, and I'm making them darker. Like, I'm basically getting the part darker, but not everything. And I'm making it way too strong, as you can see here. Okay, and then I'm gonna back it down a little bit. But see, before the brush stroke, after the brush stroke, I'm adding drama. I'm adding drama. So I'm gonna new, new again, and maybe just here, add a bit of brush here. You have to do it to a point where it's kind of nice, but if somebody sees it like, oh, I can see, I can tell. Like for example, I can see too much, so I can delete that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my flow and, fit and density much lower. And I'm gonna do the same brush stroke, but this time it's gonna be a lot more subtle. It's all about sudden subtlety. So, okay, now before, after, before, after. Okay, that's about it. I think I'm gonna just make this a bit more panoramic. Yes, yeah, so we are like more on the mountains. And you see here, it's kind of like little, I mean, it's almost nothing. You know what? I think one more gradient in Lightroom. Doing, I'm gonna add one more gradient. I could do it in Tonality Pro, but now that I have just one little thing and uh, maybe not that dark. Okay, and now it's cool. It's perfect. It is perfect. Maybe add a little clarity overall on top of everything. And we've got a, we've got a very nice dramatic photo. I might lower the overexposure of the photo to make it even more intense. And uh, you know, there you have it. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, a seven thousand six hundred and three sixty pixels long. I can make a a two meter print with this, and it will look awesome. So next time you take an airplane, take some photos, and uh, if the colors are not good because you know you have. A, some reflection of what's going on inside. Well, just take the colors down, use Tonality Pro and make an amazing uh, fine art black and white. I hope you like this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, as you can see. And today I'm here to talk to you about one of my most exciting courses, the Photography Lone Exposure course. Lone exposure is an amazing technique where you can get silky water, stretchy skies, you can get surreal photography, you can see some of the final results you're gonna learn. In all, there is eight different projects, most of them being shot in Paris, and I will show you live how I shot the photos, you know, what time of the day, how I put the filters on, the settings of the camera. I tell you everything. I give you all the raw files. It's one of my coolest course I've ever done. I'm really proud of it. And I hope you're going to check it out. The Lone Exposure Photography Course by me. Mesdames et Messieurs, au revoir.